Hey Prodigy Land, it's me, Coach Randy. Just got a couple of quick messages before we get started today. This episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour was recorded last weekend, just a day before the tragic news out of California about the helicopter crash that claimed the life of Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and so many of their friends. What struck me about this tragedy was that he was just taking his daughter to another sporting event. Like I see so many junior bowlers and their parents going to GYBT tournaments and, and Tough Shots tournaments and all kinds of tournaments all over the state, all over the country. He was just doing what he and his daughter loved to do, go to a sporting event. So I just wanted to say something to you junior bowlers and any parents who might be watching today. Take a moment, put your arms around your parents, hug them, tell them you love them, and parents do the same thing with your kids. Tomorrow is never promised for any of us, and it's just so sad what happened out there. And even though many of us may not have ever known Kobe personally, he was a public figure that touched a lot of lives. I know a lot of the kids on Prodigy were big fans, and a lot of them were really saddened by the news. I'm sure a lot of you were too. So just take a moment, slow things down long enough, and just let the people you love know you love them, okay? Now, the real reason why I wanted to have a little message in front of our show today was to let you in on a little programming note. You'll notice I'm wearing my Len Dawson Kansas City Chiefs jersey. It was 50 years ago the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl, and I have been waiting every day of those 50 years for them to get back. I grew up in Kansas City. I watched Super Bowl IV, saw Super Bowl I when they lost, and Super Bowl IV when they won, and I'm anxious to see the game this weekend. So we're not going to shoot an episode of Prodigy this weekend on the 1st of February because quite honestly, if the Chiefs lose this weekend, I'm going to be in no mood to sit in front of a computer editing a show all week. And if they win, I'm not going to be in any mood to sit in front of a computer all week editing a show. So we're not going to do a show this weekend on the 1st. So there won't be a show this next week. And the weekend after that, Saturday, February 8th, I've already been told by the Bowling Center that they've got a big wing ding scheduled that they're booking the whole center for, so we can't shoot Prodigy that day. So the next opportunity we'll have to shoot an episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour will be the following Saturday, the 15th of February, which means it won't release until the 21st. So that's the next episode of Prodigy you'll see after this one will be when it drops on February 21st. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. I think you'll find it interesting enough that it might tide you over for a couple of weeks. This is a really fun one, and I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you in three weeks. Each year on a cold, wintry weekend, the giants of our game come together to decide who's the best in a strike or no strike test of wills. To determine who gets to claim they're the king of the hill to crown a champion. In 2017, the strikingest strike ball of them all belonged to Charlie Bostick, who outlasted Christian Manel to claim the title. In 2018, it was Josh Donaghy who edged Dawson Stewart and Anthony Smiga on his way to his first Prodigy Bowlers Tour title. And last year, in 2019, Nick Dissinger continued his season-long domination, capturing another win in our annual Super Bowling Weekend Strikes Only format. Today, we'll crown two champions, one in the littles, one in the bigs, as we mark our fourth Super Bowling Weekend. It's Super Roll 4. Celebrating junior bowling, elevating junior bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. 
live on tape from Bolero Roswell in Roswell, Georgia. This is Coach Randy welcoming you to episode 115 of Prodigy Bowlers Tour, Super Roll 4. Today, 12 kids, seven bigs and five littles came to put their skills to the test in a very special competition. Each year around the biggest football game of the year, we hold a special event that requires players to bring their best in a strikes only format. But this year, we're introducing a new twist. Today, we'll show you every ball of the qualifying round. But instead of a normal style qualifying round, you'll see a brand new format, specially created to fit into our annual football theme. We call it the two minute drill, and it works like this. There you go. Each player in our field will be given two minutes to get as many strikes as they can. The player with the most strikes will be seated highest in our stepladder finals. All 12 players will qualify for their respective stepladders. Five players in the littles, seven in the bigs. So the two minute drill is only to jockey for position in the stepladders. And then once the championship round stepladder finals is underway, they'll be shooting for strikes only. The player with the most strikes in each nine frame match will be the winner. We've mixed all 12 players together and set the order of play for our qualifying round by drawing their names out of a hat. We'll introduce you to each contestant as they come up to bowl. In our two minute drill, each player will have four lanes to bowl on. We're using lanes 35, 36, 37, and 38. Players can choose any of the four lanes to bowl on so they won't have to wait for a pin setter stoppage or a ball return. We'll have people down on the lanes to assist with resetting the racks to keep things moving for the players. We've advised the bowlers that they'd be better off to have at least one ball ready to go on each ball return so they won't have to wait for their ball to come back from the last shot they threw. But it's up to each player to decide how to manage that. Again, they'll have two minutes to get as many strikes as they can on these four lanes. And now, first up in the order, bowling out of Roswell, Georgia, is 16-year-old Jesse Hamadi. Earlier today in our Roswell Varsity League, Jesse got up in the 10th frame of his third game working on the front nine strikes in a row.
That's exactly what my brother did, bro. Oh, wow. oh man. That's so sad. You tied the house record. There's a what? Oh, Mike. Mike. Mikey Mike. and 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 AJ Hairston shot 299 Dang also. It. Mike. Oh. Unbelievable. Starts ticking down. Jesse high with his first attempt. High again on lane 37. As this is non stop action in the two minute drill, Jesse lines up for a shot on lane 35. He crosses over. Oh, apparently the reset button on 36 doesn't work. Great. So we'll have to reset it using the touch pad. That'll do it. That's why we have four lanes. Oh, a ring and 10 on lane 38. Jesse's a minute in, still looking for his first strike. There's one. Goes high with that shot. You see Doug O'Brien, Annalise's dad, floating and helping with the resetting of the pin setters. Twenty seconds left. Jesse has just one strike. There's another one. He was the striking king just earlier during league. Gets a crossover on that last one. So he finishes with three strikes. Bowling second in the order is Josh Greenberg. Josh is 13 years old and bowls in our Roswell Junior Varsity League, where he's carrying a league average of 137. Two minute drill starts right now. Crosses over, but that seven pin stubbornly refuses to go. He's got the right idea. Just throw it and then turn your back and go run and throw another one. That's high, leaves a couple. Oh, in the pocket that time, but the 810, well, at least he doesn't have to shoot it. Another high hit. One minute. There he gets a crossover. Another pretty good pocket hit, just a little high. You see the players warming up on 33 and 34. Just ignore them. They'll be up later. There's a crossover strike for Josh. He's got two. Twenty seconds. Oh, 
Oops, that one's a little wide. And the time runs out on him. He finishes with two strikes in the two-minute drill. Bowling third in the order is Christian Manel. At 16 years of age, Christian is averaging 201 in the Roswell Varsity League. Although that number should go up a bit, as today he shot games of 266, 214, and 265 for a series total of 745. The two-minute drill starts right now. Oh, pretty good shot, ringing 10, as Christian hustles over to lane 37. Yeah, that one was high. As he sets himself. Sends that one way wide and it comes back and there's his first strike. And now he races over to lane 38. <laughs> there's another strike. Who knew that Christian could be so light on his feet? There's another one, three in a row. One minute. Another high hit on lane 37. And it looks like 36 doesn't want to set the 10 pin. So he's got to go back over to 38. A little high, leaves the nine. Christian hasn't run this much in one afternoon and I don't know how long. A stone nine. He could have at least five strikes by now. Oh, stone eight. Another one robbed from him. And then a nine pin. He throws his arms up in disgust. We'll see if he can't get one more shot off. And it falls off into the gutter. It would have counted had he struck because he did get it off his hand before the clock wound down. But Christian finishes with three. Bowling fourth is the smallest little in our field today. Aubrey Nathanson. Aubrey just celebrated her eighth birthday. She bowls league at Cherokee Lanes in Canton, Georgia and carries a league average right around 100. The two minute drill starts right now. Now Aubrey is at a decided disadvantage to the other players. She's only got one bowling ball. One of the other players suggested maybe she use a house ball on one of the pairs of lanes, but she has opted to go with just her own ball. It's drilled for her hand. Now remember, all these kids will make the step ladder no matter how many strikes they get in the two minute drill. They're just jockeying for position in the step ladder. And I'm guessing the scores among the littles probably won't be all that high, so if she could just get a couple of strikes, she might be right there in the hunt. Oh, that was almost a strike. But now, see, she would be throwing another shot right now if she had another ball, but... The 
This one has a chance. Oh, a four pin won't go. Story of my life. All right. Probably got time for just this one last shot before the buzzer goes off. And it's not a strike. So Aubrey comes up empty in the two minute drill, but that's all right. She'll still be in the stepladder. Bowling fifth in the order is Aubrey's big brother, Christopher Nathanson. Chris is 11th and the only southpaw in our field today. This 133 average bowler is also the only redhead in our field today. Your two minute drill starts right now. And that one crosses way over and misses the head pin on the right. Could be nerves. Oh, look at that, he trips the 2-7. You don't see that every day. A high hit, nearly carried a jersey squasher. Not this time. Oh, and he's robbed on that one. Solid 10. Another high hit. Not taking any time on these shots. Oh man, another good ball. Solid seven. <laughs> he doesn't even, he takes his approach from lane 36 to throw a shot on 35. In a hurry. And that one slips off into the channel. Gotta at least set your feet, I would think. And that one almost hooks off the lane. Oh, a swish and 10. He's not getting any breaks on the shots that he throws good. 10, 9, 8. High hit there. Got time for, well, maybe he doesn't have time for one more. The clock runs out on him. Christopher Nathanson only able to get one strike in his two-minute drill. Sixth in the lineup is Roswell, Georgia's Hunter Moffitt. Hunter just turned 12 at the end of November and is currently averaging 182 in our Roswell Varsity League. He elected to move up from the junior varsity to the varsity this year. And in so doing, he moved from the littles to the bigs on Prodigy. After being one of the winningest players last year on Prodigy, he's still on the outside looking in, hoping for his first win of the season on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. He's hoping today might finally be his day. Your drill starts right now. Comes up a little thin on the first one and races over to lane 38. Hunter just throws him and then runs to the next shot. That may be the best way to play this. There's his first strike. High hit that time. And he tilts out the 10 with a little love tap. That's his second strike. Yeah, that ball, a little DOA. They broke down the 5-7 that time, left just the 5, but still no strike. A minute to go. 
And there's another strike. There's four strikes for Hunter. And he gets his fifth. Now he's on a roll. Goes one-handed for that one. He's gonna be out of breath when this is over. All right, 10, nine, goes one-handed. Trips the six for his sixth strike. And then the clock runs out on him. But Hunter showed them all how it's done in the two-minute drill right there. That's six strikes, and Hunter moves into first place in the bigs division. Bowling seventh is John Wolfolk of Columbus, Georgia. John and his mom and grandma made the long trip to get here today. But John is determined to break through and do something he's yet to do on Prodigy. Sign the coveted trophy pin. John carries a league average in the 220s down in Columbus. Your two minute drill starts right now. Boom. He wastes no time getting on the board. John's running to the next shot, but he looks like he's actually taking a little time to set his feet, and get ready to go. That may be the best way to approach this. That's three in a row. It's working for John. That's four straight, he hasn't missed yet. Wow, five in a row. I definitely think he's got the right idea. Take a little time to set yourself up, but then don't waste any time getting to the next shot. Man, that is six strikes in a row for John. Make that seven. He has taken the lead from Hunter. That's eight in a row. As he runs around, gets over to lane 38. A stone nine. Seven, six. Got it off his hand. Well, that would have counted had it been a strike because he did get it off his hand before the clock ran out, but that is an amazing eight strikes for John in the two-minute drill. Eighth in the order is eight-year-old Colton Meenick. Colton is making just his second appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour today. Colton bowls in the youth program at Cherokee Lanes in Canton and carries a league average of 79. Your two minute drill starts right now. Well, that one's wide of the head pin. You know, when you're eight years old and your average is 79, it's hard to get a strike under optimum conditions. And when you're trying to race like this, Probably not ideal for him, especially when at that age, we usually, as coaches, are telling you to slow down. Oop. Well, he could have gone ahead and thrown there at 36, but... 
Yeah, you got to keep it off the gray board. Now, Colton just got a new ball. It's the one that he just threw over on lane 35. This is his old ball. And it's a good thing he brought it because that gives him a ball for each pair of lanes. Otherwise, he would have been in the same situation as Aubrey with just one ball, having to wait for it to come back each time. Well, if these little guys can just get a piece of the head pin, they'll have a chance of getting them to mix and all go down. That's not going to work. Over lane 35, their pin's ready. All right, now he races over to lane 35. How about it? How about it? Nope. Well, that one's going to be wide. If he hurries, he might be able to throw one more. Not to be. And Colton comes up empty in the two-minute drill. But that's okay. He and Aubrey both with zeros. They're still going to be in our step ladder finals today on Super Roll 4. Bowling ninth is 18-year-old Cameron Emerson from Douglasville, Georgia, way out on the west side of town. Cameron says his average is around 210, although he doesn't bowl in a league. In fact, he says he's only been bowling about a year, a claim I'm sure you'll find as hard to believe as we do once you see him bowl. All right, Cameron, your two-minute drill starts right now. And I think you're going to enjoy watching this kid bowl. Long and lean. And he can really zing it down the lane. And that's two strikes out of the gate for Cameron. Oh, a ringing 10. Comes in thin on that one. Another solid strike. That time the 10 wouldn't go, but he's already got three halfway through. Oh, that light shaker almost went, but the five remains. There's another strike. That's four. And five. Comes up high with that one, wasting no time. Oh, and the seven shakes, but won't roll over. Oh, he gets a Brooklyn to go. And he just got that one off his hand before the clock struck zero. So that's seven strikes for Cameron Emerson, and that moves him into second place, just behind John Wolfolk, who had eight in the two-minute drill. Bowling 10th in the order is Drake Meenick. Drake is little Colton's 11-year-old brother. Drake recently converted to two-handed and carries a league average of 135 over at Cherokee Lanes in Canton, Georgia. Your two-minute drill starts right now. And 
he gets the nine and 10 to collapse on a Brooklyn hit for his first strike. And the seven won't quite go to give him two in a row out of the gate. Drake is our final little in the field today. And the 10 goes out late on that Brooklyn hit. So he has tied Josh atop the Littles leaderboard. And now with that strike, he has passed him. So no matter how many more strikes Drake gets, he's gonna finish in first place in the Littles at the end of our two minute drill. The rest of this is just for fun to see how many strikes he can get in two minutes. That one goes high. Go to the left lane. As he runs around the lane 35 to see if there's another strike waiting for him there. Not to be. Well, he found success when the Brooklyn side earlier didn't happen for him on lane 38 with that toss. And nor does he get one there. This is all academic. He's already secured first place in the Littles as the time ticks down. And that'll do it. Drake Minick accomplished his mission. Three strikes in the two minute drill puts him in first place in the Littles. Bowling 11th in the order today is Bolin Nolan Kemp. Nolan is 18 and finally won his first solo title on Prodigy Bowlers Tour back on our Halloween episode in the fall. Nolan has grown up in our Roswell Varsity League where he is now carrying a league average of 197. All right, Nolan, your two minute drill starts right now. A little thin with that first shot. Brooklyn with the next one. Gets a Brooklyn to go for his first strike. It's not how, it's how many. Another light one, he nearly broke it down with a bucket crumbler, but pin remained. And that's a solid strike there. So two for Nolan so far. I believe that's his spare ball that he's throwing on the pair to the right. He slips over and falls, reaching for the ball on the left pair. Gets another strike, though. Got to be careful. Don't fall over. He's got two lanes that have a 180 stop. He's got to run all the way over to lane 38. No bowling balls over there on 35-36. We had to grab the one from 37-38. He rips the rack. That's five strikes for Nolan. <laughs> There's another strike. Six. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's off his hand in time. And that's seven strikes as Nolan collapses on the floor, but he finishes the two-minute drill with seven strikes.
Bowling in the anchor position, 12th in our order today, is the current two-time defending junior gold U15 girls national champion, Annalise O'Brien. Now 15, she'll be competing in the U17 division at junior gold this summer. Annalise is presently carrying a 224 league average in our Roswell Varsity League. Wow, a pocket 7-10 to start. At least she doesn't have to shoot it. But I'll tell you what, she's got the right idea. Throw it and run, and then take your time in setup. There's a strike. Annalise is the kind of disciplined player that I would expect to take this approach. Just take a brief moment, set your feet, make sure you're ready. And there's two strikes in a row. Oh, ring and 10, but a good shot. One minute. There's another one. See if she can put on a flurry here at the end. This is fascinating. These kids got no warm-up balls on the two-minute drill pairs of lanes. She gets a Brooklyn to go. A trip four. She rips the rack that time. There's seven strikes. Ten, nine. With that one, she ties John. That guarantees that she'll be in the final match. That last one got off her hand in time, but it's not to be. Eight strikes for Annalise in the two-minute drill. So there you go, our first ever two-minute drill on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. And from what the players tell me, it was a heart-pounding experience in more ways than one. But now the seedings are set. In the bigs division, Christian, Jesse, and Hunter will meet in the opening match, and the winner will advance to face Cameron and Nolan in match two. The winner of that match will bowl for the championship against John and Annalise. But first, coming up in the Littles division, our opening match will feature Christopher, Aubrey, and Colton, with the winner advancing to bowl for the Littles championship against Drake and Josh. It's all coming up on Prodigy Bowlers Tours Super Roll 4.
The seven players in the bigs will stay loose on our practice pair off to the left. But before we get to them, it's time to settle things among the littles. In our opening match, Christopher Nathanson, who scored one strike in the two-minute drill, will square off against his adorable little sister Aubrey and their pal Colton Meenick. We flipped a coin to determine the order of play between Aubrey and Colton, who both scored a zero in the two-minute drill. And it's going to be Christopher first, then Aubrey, then Colton. Remember, they're only bowling for strikes here. If a player falls behind in a match more strikes than there are frames remaining, they're out. So let's get this party started. Christopher will lead off on lane 39. Right in the pocket, but leaves the seven pin, so that's no strike in the opening frame. So Christopher will reset the rack and get it ready to go for his sister Aubrey. You know, as coaches, we stress spares so much with youth bowlers that it's a little out of character for them not to need to shoot spares, but that's the game today. This is all strikes. Ooh! It looked like it hung on her thumb that time. And I think she's in a little bit of pain. Well, that happens sometimes. Sometimes when you're squeezing it, you'll hang in the thumb hole, but that's not good. And it's very disconcerting for a player to hang in the thumb hole, because now you don't know whether you can trust that it will come off your hand next time. All right, Colton. Well, wide left with that one. The players did get two practice balls on each lane before the match, so they've seen what this pair will do. And Christopher playing a pretty extreme angle. He's letting the ball go from the far right side of the lane, throwing it way out to the left, and any little error wide left, and it's going to find the gray board. So no strike there. Aubrey. How about it? Nope. Drifts high. Leaves a couple, so we're still looking for our first strike of this match. And next to give it a go will be Colton Meenick. He and his brother making their second appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour today. Colton throws a bit of a backup ball. We'll have to go to work on that here in the coming months. Now Christopher. Well, he'll take that Brooklyn. He was standing a lot farther to the left that time. And it did cross over, but it's a strike, so he's on the board. Again, they're just bowling for strikes. Whoever can get the most strikes in nine frames wins. How about that one? She gets a nose dive to cave in and the six takes out the 10 late but it's a strike and Aubrey has tied her older brother Christopher and now Colton with his try on lane 39 well he got a piece of the head pin and with these little guys, sometimes that's enough. But his try leaves a couple. 
And now the pin setter appears frozen. Well, Christopher drifts Brooklyn and leaves the four and seven, so no strike for him in the fourth. As we wait for the machine to cycle. Aubrey moves to lane 40, tied with her brother Christopher, one apiece. She can move out into the lead with a strike here. How about it? A little high on the Brooklyn side, leaves the six. So Colton will move up into position. And now he will try to join Christopher and Aubrey with one strike. We're bowling on the house shot today. Didn't want to make it too difficult for anybody. And besides, since we're going for just strikes, I figured it'd be more fun if we saw a lot of them. We're not seeing a lot of them yet, but I suspect we'll see a lot more once we get into the bigs matches. There's the seven count, not to be confused with a strike. So Colton still looking for his first strike of the match as Christopher now moves over to the left lane. That one just jumps a little bit on him at the very end through the nose. And I think he's a little bit confused. So he will step aside and his sister Aubrey will get set. Aubrey's liable to sneak up on him here. That one misses to the left. You might get one right here. And so Aubrey remains stuck on the number one. One strike so far. Colton would like to join Christopher and Aubrey at one. He resets the rack and uh, We'll give it a go. This is a new bowling ball Colton just got. I think he went up a pound or two in weight. Not sure about the weight he's throwing, but it can't be too heavy. All right, Christopher, back up on lane 40. He gives it the big crank, and they all go down. Easily the best shot he's thrown so far today. That was all 10 back. So now Christopher moves out into the lead. We'll see what his sister Aubrey can do to try to match him. Almost. That light pink ball actually deflected in front of the four. So Colton hits the reset button to sweep that four pin away. And now he knows exactly what he's got to do. Trailing by two now, he's got to get busy. Oh, 
But that one falls off to the right. And Colton with those crossed arms, you can read his body language. He's not happy. And Christopher can't be happy with that. That's twice now. He's just missed wide left. And that gives Aubrey uh, another chance to catch him. You don't need to reset it. Aubrey sets her feet carefully. She knows exactly where she wants to aim. This looks like it might be close. Just drifts a little high. Leaves the three pin, so once again, no strike. These matches go by quickly when you're only throwing one ball. Now, if Colton fails to strike here, he'll go dormy. Christopher will have him by two with just two frames left. And oh, man, a bad break that time. He got nine and a wiggle. But now he's dormy on Christopher. If Christopher strikes here in the eighth, that'll shut out Colton. And he'll go dormy on his sister, Aubrey. But that doesn't happen. That's three times now. Christopher has sent it into the left gutter. What's up with that, young man? So now Aubrey, running out of frames, needs to get another one here. Not to be this time. So now Colton is in a must strike situation. Trailing by two, he only has the eighth and ninth frame left. So he must strike here or he's out. If he fails to strike on this one, he can't catch Christopher. And he gets one pin, that's not going to be enough. So that eliminates Colton from the competition. So it comes down to Christopher and Aubrey now. Christopher, a strike would put Aubrey out. Oh, that was a pretty good shot. But it's a little high and now Aubrey has a chance to tie her brother and send this thing to sudden death. But she must strike. These little kids, this kind of pressure is not something they're used to in league bowling, but here it is. Aubrey must strike or Christopher will move on. Has a chance. Oh! So close and yet so far. And Aubrey wants none of the hug or handshake Christopher was going to give her. Christopher will bowl for the championship against Josh and Drake next. Well, that's it, everybody. Mark 125 for the final man on the Hot Shots team. The Tigers need a big spare to win. It's all up to this batter, Timmy Cole, right now. Here's Cole up at the skittle board, lining up, and... No! A tough break! A tough break! Now Timmy has that pesky 357 combination to pick up the spare. Will he play it safe? No, he's going for all three. We'll be back after a closer look at Skittle Bowl. Skittle Bowl is made by Aurora. It's a game of skill that any number can play. Children tend to be remarkably good at it when they can get it away from their parents. Skittle Bowl by Aurora.
Now back to the action, Cole with his final shot, and he's done it! He's done it! The Tigers win the championship! Skittle Bowl, the next best thing to having a bowling alley in your home. a whole lot of fun, but to bowl or do anything well, you have to be healthy. So take good care of yourself, and whatever you do, don't start smoking. It's hard to do your best when there's smoke inside your chest. Don't start smoking. We don't like smoking. You're gonna feel alright. Just refuse that light. Don't start smoking. We don't like smoking. So let's go bowl with Mary Lou, cause it's what we like to do. We like to bowl. We don't like smoking. Brought to you by the American Heart Association. Well, the opening match in the Littles was not exactly a strike-a-palooza, but we saw a lot of heart on display as these youngsters gave their all. And Christopher had to wait until his sister delivered her final ball before he knew for sure that he was moving forward. But it is indeed Christopher Nathanson who survives match one and now finds himself bowling for the Super Roll Four title in the Littles division against number two seed Josh Greenberg and our tournament leader Drake Meenick. Christopher Nathanson already with a couple of titles on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Josh has won a time or two. Drake looking for his first. A high hit for Christopher. They're bowling in reverse order of the way they finished the two minute drill. With the higher finishers going last. Christopher, the winner of our opening match in the stepladder. And now Josh. Pretty good ball. Broke sharply at the end. That kind of surprised me. I think it surprised him too. Josh, the only kid left in the Littles from our program here at Bolero Roswell. So, got a couple of Cherokee Lanes kids in Christopher Nathanson and Drake Meenick. There's a solid strike to begin. Drake throws his hands up in the air in celebration. And he takes the early lead. So now Christopher will try to put one up there to keep pace. And he does just that. Suddenly these lanes have come alive. I promise you one thing, Josh does not want to be on the outside looking in. But he's going to have to wait as we've got a 180 stop on lane 40. As we wait for the pins to load into the turret back in the back. Nothing like a 180 stop to get you out of your rhythm. Hitting the reset button is not going to help. We just have to wait. There you go. All right, Josh. Put one right in the hole. Thank you. 
Well, not that hole. All right. Well, that was a little like calling timeout on a field goal kicker at the end of the game. Iced him. But he's got seven more frames to catch up. Drake resets the rack and now he gets to wait. And he puts it right in the pocket. So Drake off to a quick start here. Leading two to one over Christopher and two to nothing over Josh. The Brooklyn won't go for Christopher. So he remains stuck on one for now. As Josh tries to loosen up, we've talked about it before, he is a nervous little guy. He'll get up on the lane and just fidget. I think the fidget spinner was invented for him. There you go. That one was perfect. So now we've got us a match, two to one to one. And Drake will attempt to stay perfect here. But comes up a little thin that time. Leaves three, so. He stays at two for the time being. And now Christopher with a chance to tie it up. Oh, yes, sir. And now this pair of lanes has really started to heat up. This is more like the action I was expecting. Now Josh would love to get one here and tie things up completely. He gets it on the Brooklyn side, but he gets it. And he gives it a fist bump, and now they're knotted at two. So that'll get Drake's attention now. He thought he had them for a little while, but now they've all caught up. But he gets a Brooklyn. And now Drake moves back out ahead. Christopher gets that thing way out there and it comes charging back, crossing over, and he leaves one. So, so far, Christopher seems to like the right lane, not so much with the left lane. And now let's see what Josh can do to try to catch Drake. Just jumped on him a little bit at the end. So no strike for Josh in the fifth. And now Drake with another opportunity to extend his lead. Look at this, does some calisthenics to try to stay loose. It's never a bad idea. 
it's an even better idea to do that sort of stuff before and after you bowl. Oh, look at this. He gets a reverse blower on the Brooklyn side. And now the lead is two. Drake with four strikes in five frames. Josh and Christopher with two strikes so far. And Christopher throws it in the moat. And he needs to quit that. All right, Josh. He almost got a Brooklyn and nearly tripped the six. But now Christopher and Josh are giving Drake an opportunity to run away and hide. He can go dormy on him if he strikes here in the sixth. He'd be up by three. Christopher and Josh would have three frames left. But no, he goes high, leaves a couple. So now Chris and Josh have got to get busy. Christopher misses the head pin on the right. And he's just not uh, real consistent this match. He's either standing more toward the center of the lane or he's way over to the right and throwing it way out to the outside. He needs to set his feet, know exactly where he's standing, pick out a target and stick with it. Look at Josh. He gets a Brooklyn. And now he's very much in the mix. Trailing by just one. But Drake can eliminate Christopher right here. And there you go, a strike to get him to five. Christopher is out. And now it's down to Josh and Drake. Drake is dormy on Josh. Josh must strike here, or Drake is the winner. There you go. Talk about a clutch shot. Facing elimination, Josh steps up and gets a light shaker to go. But Drake can still win it. A strike here, and he would claim victory, but he's going to have to wait first. There you go. The pin setter is ready. A strike to win. Oh, he puts it in the pocket, but the 10 pin remains. So we go to the ninth frame, and Josh, once again, needs a strike just to stay alive. He would force Drake to strike to beat him, but Josh must strike here, or it's all over. Drake would be the winner. He knows exactly what he needs. And Drake gets on his hands and knees to try to stay out of Josh's peripheral view to hit the reset button. It's all right, just let it go. Josh is ready. Gotta have it. Oh, a swish and seven won't go. And that's it, Drake has won Super Roll 4 in the Littles division on Prodigy Bowler Tour. We'll get him to sign the pin, and then we'll bring you the opening match in the bigs next. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit prodigybowlerstour.com to see the selection. 
See the ash gray celebrating junior bowling, elevating junior bowlers t-shirt. Or the who will win the coveted trophy pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, bowl me. There's a t-shirt that says, bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to prodigybowlerstour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to prodigybowlerstour.com. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. An exciting final match among the Littles, and it came down to Josh's final ball. Everything went but the seven pin, and that's how it ends in the Littles today, as Drake Meenick claims victory in Super Roll 4, and now gets a trip to the winner's circle for the ceremonial signing of the coveted trophy pin. This also makes him eligible for our season-ending Prodigy Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions in June. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a first-time winner on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. It's Drake Meenick. Congratulations. Were you nervous? Oh, yeah. How about that two-minute drill? Did that have you out of breath? Oh, uh, yes, it did. I was heart-pounding. Heart was pounding? Step ladder. I was a little nervous on that, but I thought I could tough it off and make that easy. Well, you did great, and now you get to sign the coveted trophy pin and put today's date on it. 125. Go ahead and sign it anywhere you want. There's one of your challengers who put on a strong bid. I did as much as I could, but in the end, he was the victor. He got it done today. It's time we turn our attention to the bigs. As you recall, in our opening match, Christian Minnell and Jesse Hamadi, who both scored three strikes in the two-minute drill, take on Hunter Moffat, who registered six strikes in the two-minute drill. The winner of this match will move one step closer to the title and will face Cameron Emerson and Nolan Kemp in match two, while the winner of that match will bowl for the championship against John Wolfolk and Annalise O'Brien in the final. But first things first, it's match one among the bigs. And if the bigs bring us anything close to the excitement we saw in the championship match in the Littles, this should be a lot of fun. Hunter's gonna lead off, he had six strikes in the two minute drill. And he gets another one here to start his match in the bigs. Now Jesse and Christian each had three strikes. We flipped a coin to determine which of them would go first, and it's gonna be Jesse. Jesse shot 299 his last game on this pair of lanes today. Thank you. 
But he begins this match with a non-strike. So, Hunter, the only one with a strike so far. Christian will try to match him. Christian was no slouch on this pair. He shot 7.45 in league today. They were bowling on 39 and 40. Christian and Jesse are teammates in the Roswell Varsity League. All six of our lanes on Prodigy today were freshly run for our Prodigy event. Thin. And so Hunter takes the early lead in match one. Hunter has not won yet this season since moving up to the bigs division, and he is hungry. And you throw enough balls like that, young man, and you're liable to find yourself bowling for a championship. Two strikes in a row to get started, and the bigger kids are looking at him like, okay, it's going to be like that, is it? It might. Hunter is very determined. But Jesse and Christian know how to strike, too, so we'll see. A lot of frames left. Too thin to strike there for Jesse. As we see Mike Marchman, the facilities manager here at Bolero Roswell, make his way down the catwalk. To go to work back there in that crazy area behind the pin setter that is so mysterious to so many of us. All right, Christian needing to get on the board here. And he does with a light shaker. So Hunter's lead is two to one over Christian, two to nothing over Jesse. As we head to frame three. And Hunter trips the four to stay perfect through three frames and keeps the heat on Jesse and Christian. Hunter's not joking around today. Jesse rips the rack. He sneaks up on the foul line and then just lets it go. And that ball just exploded at the pins. So now Christian will try to stay within one of Hunter. But he leaves a ring in 10. He got his fill of wraps in the two minute drill. He had several good balls that could have struck that left one. Wide with that one, so an opening for Jesse and Christian to close Hunter's lead a bit. Jesse, who's still looking for his first strike on lane 40 in this match. No time like the present to get it. Jesse and his family, like me, from Kansas City, big Chiefs fans. Yeah. 
And the seven goes late, but it goes. So that gets Jesse to two strikes in this match. And now Christian finds himself trailing the pack. And if the love tap didn't get the 10, the messenger was gonna. So three to two to two now. Hunter feels a little squeeze from the players behind him. But it doesn't seem to bother him one lick. As he plows him over in the fifth, that's four strikes in five frames for Hunter. Jesse and Christian now know they've got a, a little tiger by the tail. Oh man. A very similar shot to the one he carried on lane 40, where the seven went out late, but this time it stubbornly refuses to go. And so Jesse remains stuck at two. And now Christian will give it a go and try to pull to within one of Hunter. And that's about as perfect as you can throw it. Hunter says, that's fine, I got one right here for you. So the lead once again is two, Hunter. Five strikes in six frames. And now Jesse needs a strike here, or he will be dormy with Hunter three ahead with three frames left. Oh, a stone nine. And he gives a salute, but pretty sure that's not out of respect. So now Jesse's back is to the wall. Christian needs this one to stay within one of Hunter. Getting late in the match. Little wide. So we head to the seventh frame, Hunter with a five to three to two lead. Hunter can go dormy on Christian with a strike here in the seventh, and he can eliminate Jesse with a strike here. And that'll do it for Jesse. As the best he can do now is five. So he will sit the rest of the way. And Christian is in a must strike situation. If he fails to strike here, Hunter is the winner of this match. Oh. 
And what would an episode of Prodigy be without Christian leaving a 210 combination? Hunter has won match one in the Bigs division, and he will move on to face Nolan Kemp and Cameron Emerson in match two when we return. Hi, I'm Earl Anthony. Just because I use an Ebonite bowling ball doesn't mean that Ebonite makes bowling balls only for the pros. Ebonite makes a ball for everyone in the family. All weights, all prices, and all colors. These same balls have helped me win more money and more tournaments than any other bowler. Bowling's my job. But for you, it can be a lot of fun when you bowl with Ebonite. Life passing you by? Get rolling. Go bowling. Shape up. Slim down. Wind up to wind down. There's room on weekends, also daytimes during the week. So live it up. Go bowling. Start this weekend. I can pretty much guarantee you that Christian and Jesse were not expecting to get ambushed by Hunter that match. But Hunter put an old-fashioned beatdown on the two older boys, and now it's Hunter Moffat who has advanced to match two in the bigs division, where the heat's about to get turned up. Hunter got six strikes in the two-minute drill, but both Nolan Kemp and Cameron Emerson registered seven strikes in their heart-pounding two-minute drills. So I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if this match came down to the final frame. A coin toss between Cameron and Nolan determined which of them would go before the other. It's gonna be Hunter leading off, then Cameron, and then Nolan. So tape up your ankles and make sure your helmet's on straight because this should be a good one. Well, Hunter just pulled that one, never got it wide enough, not his best shot, so he will start with a non-strike. Well, if this is your first time watching Prodigy Bowlers Tour, we recognize that you may not know these kids by name, and that's why we try to make it easy for you to follow along by color-coding the score sheet so that each player's score sheet is color-coded to their shirt or an article of clothing. Now Cameron Emerson. And boom! Big strong guy with a big strong strike to start. Messenger wipes out the 10 pin. And Cameron puts one on the board early. And now Nolan Kemp. Nolan as we've mentioned before, grew up in our youth bowling program at Bolero Roswell. This, his final year with us as he'll be aging out. Nearly broke down the 2-4-5, but the 5 remains. So it's Cameron who gets off to the early lead here. Now Hunter up on lane 40. And he gets a wall shot to go. So, Hunter is on the board. He looked so strong in that opening match in the bigs. He's got to be careful to protect against a letdown here. Oh man, a ring and ten. <laughs> Cameron makes a comment to us. He says, you'll figure it out about me. I don't get any carry. I don't know if I'm going to believe that. I have a feeling that he'll be 
having something to say about the outcome of this match before it's all said and done. No one would love to get on the board here and get in the mix. And he does just that with a solid strike. So all three players with one strike in two frames. And now Hunter begins frame three over on the left. And this little guy has been fearless ever since we first saw him on Prodigy when he was nine years old. He would mix it up with the big kids. And he's got a pretty tough challenge ahead of him this game. But he seems like he's up for it. Crunch. Man, that would have knocked down about 15 pins, I think. That is a strong ball that Cameron throws. All right, Nolan. and a wiggle is all he's going to get on that toss. Now the fourth frame begins. Hunter up on lane 40. And he comes up high that time. The only thing good about that is he doesn't have to shoot it. Cameron will sweep that away and get ready for his fourth frame attempt. This young man bowls out at Southern Lanes in Douglasville. It used to be called Your Bowling Center. Closed, new owners came in, rebranded it, Southern Lanes. And they must teach him how to bowl out there. So Cameron moves into the lead with that strike. And I'll tell you what, Nolan better put his foot on the gas right now because Cameron doesn't look like he's waiting for anybody. Well, that one was just wide of the mark. Nolan knows he just missed on that. All right, Hunter, back on lane 39. Changed balls. Got a good reaction that time. So now he's got three strikes. And Cameron steps up, hoping to re-establish a lead with another strike here. Oh, another ring and ten. He's thrown five quality shots so far and only been rewarded on three of them. But that gives Nolan an opportunity to draw a little closer. There was a time not so long ago that I think Nolan would have been a little intimidated bowling against a player like Cameron, but his confidence has grown. Well, that was an unfortunate break there. That was not a weak 5-7. That was a 
wall shot 5-7 that could have gone, but it didn't. And now Hunter moves to frame six, tied with Cameron. Soft 10. That different ball didn't quite drive through the pins that time the way the green ball he'd been throwing was doing. Keep an eye on that. Cameron sensing an opening here. Meticulous in setting his feet. Settling in before he goes. Yeah, he just pulled that one a little bit. It was a little left of his target, right off his hand. On the house shot, you would expect a shot that was only pulled a little like that might set in the oil, but with the rev rate Cameron's got, he can get the ball to move on most anything. So it was not to be. Now Nolan with an opportunity to get closer. And that's the wall shot he was hoping to get in that last frame. Where the head pin goes to the wall, comes back, kicks out the four, five, and seven. Hunter and Cameron now with three strikes apiece, Nolan with two. And Hunter goes back to that green ball, and that's the reaction he was looking for. Sometimes I think kids change balls too quickly when all they really need to do is make a slight adjustment with their feet on the approach, a board or two to the left, and maybe move their target at the arrows a board or so to the left. On the house shot, I find about a one and one or a two and one move is really all you need to stay ahead of the transition. Oh, Cameron moved in a little bit on the lane that time. And he stuffs him straight back. That looked like it was crowding the head pin a little, but he just stuffed him. So now Nolan trailing by two. Needs a strike here, or he will be dormy two behind with just two frames left. And that's exactly where he is now. So a strike by Hunter or Cameron would eliminate Nolan now. Oh my goodness, that's a six pin. He hit the pocket, the ball deflected slightly, and the six pin slid to the right. We'll get another look at it here. Watch the six pin, the second one from the right. Unbelievable. That is one of the worst breaks a right-hander can get, the pocket six pin. And it causes the six pin to move out of range where the pin setter can't pick it up. So we're going to have to wait a second while Mike unlocks things so we can proceed. That is just crazy unlucky. But now Cameron will have to sit and wait. No one's fine with it. It means that he gets a reprieve, at least from Hunter. Everybody's still in it right now. Okay, we've got the pin setter raised. Back in the back, they don't know we're bowling this format, so 
They think we just want to shoot the spare, but we're going to sweep it away here. And now Cameron is wanting to get a strike to take the lead and go dormy on Hunter. A strike here would eliminate Nolan as well. And put Cameron in the driver's seat. Here we go. But another ring 10. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe he doesn't have any carry. I still don't believe it, but that's three of those for Cameron. And Nolan with a huge reprieve. But now his back is to the wall. Nolan must strike or he's out. And he rips the rack. So Nolan stays in it. Now, once again, if either Hunter or Cameron strike, that would end Nolan's bid. Hunter and Cameron tied for the lead, coming down to the last frame. And Hunter registers a strike. You can say goodbye to Nolan on that. Nolan has seen this before, seeing Hunter put him out. But now Cameron in a must-strike situation. If he doesn't strike here, Hunter's your winner, and he'll be moving on to the championship match. If Cameron can strike, we'll go to sudden death. And he shreds the rack. What a clutch performance. So we go to sudden death. The first time one player strikes and the other doesn't, it's over. Mm, Hunter wide with that one. So he leaves the door wide open for Cameron. A strike to win. If he doesn't strike, we'll just rinse and repeat. And keep going until one of them strikes and the other doesn't. This for the win. And he did it! Cameron Emerson wins match two in the bigs division. It took an extra frame to do it as Hunter mounted a strong challenge to the 18-year-old, but it's Cameron Emerson who's bowling for the championship against Annalise and John next. Hello, friend. I'd like to bowl a few lines. Brought your own bowling pins? Why, sure. Folks who know the score know you get more action from these pins. See that big red crown that goes all around? Means it's a real red crown Dura King bowling pin made by Brunswick. Makes the game more fun. Now, why don't you have these high-scoring pins, Fran? Oh, we got them. <laughs> Look at the plaque. Brunswick. Dora King, red crown pins, you've got them all right. Can't wait, just love to bowl against those pins. <laughs> all over America, more people are bowling against red crowns than any other pins. Just look for, ask for, the big red crowns, Dora King bowling pins by Brunswick.
Then loose at Valley Ball. Take the Valley Highway or Academy Exit to security. Well, that was downright thrilling. Hunter put the heat on Cameron in the ninth frame with a strike, and Cameron answered with a strike of his own to send the match to sudden death. And while I know the ending didn't live up to what Hunter hoped it would be, this was by far his best performance of the season on Prodigy Bowler's tour. And he had a tiger by the tail in Cameron. Hunter will be back and is almost certain to find a path to the winner's circle before the season is over. But for right now, we've got a Prodigy first-timer who's advanced to the championship match as Cameron Emerson will now face two-time defending junior gold national champion Annalise O'Brien and the closer from Columbus, John Wolfel. Talk about a high-octane final. You couldn't ask for much more than this. I expect the pins to be flying every which way. Be ready to duck. The three most effective strike balls in the bigs today are about to do battle for the Super Roll 4 title. We flipped a coin to determine the order between our two players who got eight strikes in the two-minute drill. And it'll be Cameron leading off, then John, and Annalise will be bowling in the anchor position. So, let the game begin. Little double dribble, and it's still carried. Well, Cameron, maybe that's your secret. You just gotta double dribble it down there to get that 10 to go. He does get low at the line. And out of the gate quickly this match. All right, next up is John. John, you recall in the two minute drill, started with eight in a row. Crunch berries. So a couple of solid strikes for the boys. And now Annalise. I guarantee you one thing, ain't nobody in this threesome scared of bowling anybody else. Annalise sure isn't scared. And she lets him know she's here to play. So, three bowlers, three strikes to start. That's what I like to see. So now they'll move over to lane 40 for the second frame. Cameron setting his feet carefully. He won't go until he's ready. Mm, just a pinch high. 4-9. Well, actually, the pin setter knocked over the 4-pin. Doesn't matter in this case. Either way, it's not a strike. So John will sweep that away. And get set to make his attempt at a second strike here on lane 40. Nothing much phases this guy. Well, a high hit. It's a non-strike. And that opens the door for Annalise to get the early advantage. Uh -huh. 
Any questions, boys? Annalise with two solid strikes to begin. And she takes the early lead. I guarantee you these two guys know good and well what they're in for bowling against Annalise. Another double dribble. This time the ring and 10. We'll have to work that out. Earlier in the day on one of his practice shots, Cameron hit his ankle, and sent the ball straight for the gutter. He told me he works on getting that ball super close to his ankle, but he said that every once in a while he'll hit it like that. That smarts when you do that. There's another solid strike by John. So now that ties Annalise. Annalise, a very methodical, disciplined player. And that's the kind of result you get when you're a methodical, disciplined player. Three strikes to start, and a three to two to one lead for Annalise. Oh man, he got that one a little extra wide. I thought it wouldn't get back. It almost didn't. But he gets a light shaker four to go. A little unusual, but a strike nonetheless. And he broke the pin setter. Now it won't set the seven pin. So John will have to reset. While we wait for that, I'll remind you that our next taping of Prodigy Bowlers Tour will be on Saturday, February 15th. We will not shoot a show on either the 1st or the 8th of February. On the 1st, that's Super Bowl weekend. I don't want to shoot an episode because my Chiefs are playing in the game. And the following week, we're not shooting an episode because the bowling center is kicking us out for a tournament. So we'll tape on the 15th, and that show should drop on the 21st. That'll be the next time you see an episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour up here on YouTube. So this episode of Super Roll 4 will just have to tide you over for a little while. But there's been plenty of action thus far, and we expect some more before this final match is over. John shreds the rack, sends a pin out in front of the rake. And that ties things up with Annalise. And now we've got Deadwood in the right gutter. And we're letting Annalise know right now that she has the option of having us get that dead wood out of the gutter if she would prefer. She is clearing some debris off the approach. 
now her dad, Doug O'Brien, a highly skilled PBA 50 player, will show us how a professional bowler clears Deadwood out of the gutter. That's how it's done. For the record, Doug is not left-handed. <laughs> But now after this lengthy delay, first we had the pin setter malfunction on John, not wanting to set seven pins. We had to wait for that. And now Annalise having to clear Deadwood. Let's see if she can stay in rhythm and stay in the moment. Put a fourth strike on the board here in the fourth frame. Nope, soft 10. So Annalise proves she's human. And she and John tied with three strikes apiece as Cameron comes up in the fifth frame over on lane 39. And you gotta believe he knows full well that either John or Annalise could strike again, so he doesn't want to fall two strikes behind. So he's got to get busy and put another strike up right now. And there it is. So we are tied all the way around, three to three to three. I like this kind of action. Now John, he and his mom and grandma, they drove all the way up from Columbus, Georgia. That's about a two, two and a half hour drive. Oh man, that messenger just missed getting the 10 pin. I think he thought he had that one. I thought he had it. But he is denied a fourth strike here in the fifth frame. And now Annalise will try to take the lead back. She gets a ring in 10. So here we are through five frames. And the score is three to three to three. In 15 balls, we've had nine strikes. one of these three young athletes is gonna separate themselves from the other two. Well, that one was right through the snoot. But he doesn't have to shoot the Greek church. John doesn't even want to look at it, so he sweeps it away. And now he will get ready to go here, hoping to take the lead. Wow, get the license number. That was a truck going through.
All three of these young people aspire to one day be professional bowlers. I wouldn't bet against them. All right, Annalise hoping to get a strike here to match John. Pulled it. You could see it was left off her hand. Not her best. It's all right, she'll regroup, throw a good one the next time. You know that's what she's telling herself. Just let that one go. The really good players don't dwell on the bad shots. They just forget about it. They know that's not me. Go make the shot you're capable of next time. Good thing you were standing far enough back. You might have got sucked in by the backdraft. A powerful strike by Cameron. And this match remains close. Four to four to three. The last match went to sudden death. Are we gonna have a repeat of that? Well, we got Deadwood in the gutter, and so Fat Boy is going to make his best shot. Yeah, I got that shot. I got that shot. So the uh, pin setter will cycle through to the second ball cycle. John will have the option. He can either shoot at this rack or reset it for a fresh rack. I think he's going to go ahead and shoot at this. Pins look to be on spot. The honey badger don't care. That gives him five now through seven frames. Keeping the heat on his opponents. Annalise needs this strike or she will be dormy to John. And she gets a light shaker to go. So that keeps Annalise very much in this. As we move now to frame eight in this nine frame match. John with a slight advantage, but anything can happen. Strike. Wow. Not much doubt about that one. So that ties Cameron with John. We may have a photo finish here. John gets a wall shot. And that's six strikes for John, and that puts him dormy on Annalise. Which means Annalise must strike here or she's out. She will need to strike out and hope that John doesn't strike in the ninth. 
Otherwise, she's done. She got off to such a promising start with three in a row. But she must strike here. Pretty good shot, but it just comes up fractionally high. The four pin stops her and Annalise is out. She can't get there, so it's down to Cameron and John. John is now dormy on Cameron. Cameron must strike here in the ninth, or John is the winner. Trusted that one well to the right. And ain't no 10 pin this time. He got them all. So Cameron has done his part. Now it's up to John Wolfolk, who made the trip all the way from Columbus today. Just a bull prodigy. He needs a strike here to win his first title on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. If he doesn't strike, he and Cameron are going to sudden death. This for the win. And he gets it. And John Wolfel wins Super Roll Four in the Bigs Division. And we'll get him to sign the coveted trophy pin next. Hey Prodigy Land, it's me, Coach Randy, with a big thank you to all our Prodigy patrons. I know you hear me come on here every week and ask you to become a Prodigy patron, but it really does help. Believe it or not, I'm not retired, but a lot of the time I could be spending cultivating new clients for my voiceover business, I spend editing Prodigy most weeks. The show actually takes between 35 and 40 hours to edit. It really is a full-time job. And in order to justify spending my time doing that instead of, well, working, I really need to replace some of that income. Otherwise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the fact that there are so many of you willing to kick in a few bucks a month helps more than you know. If you want to show your support for the creative work that goes into producing this show about 30 weeks a year, just log on to our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash Prodigy Bowlers Tour and sign up. This year I simplified the tier system and it's super easy and affordable. For just $5 a month, you'll get early access to all our full-length episodes of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. That means while the general public typically gets the show on Fridays, you won't have to wait all the way till Friday to watch it. You'll usually get it on Thursday. And for just $10 a month, not only do you get early access to each full-length episode of Prodigy, but you even get your name listed in the end credits as one of the show's executive producers. Like being a big-time Hollywood movie mogul. Except you're not. You're a Prodigy Bowlers Tour executive producer. But hey, that's something. Anyway, if you're already a Prodigy patron, I want to express my sincere gratitude for your support. And if you're not a Prodigy patron, you can become one today. Just click over to patreon.com slash Prodigy Bowlers Tour and become a Prodigy patron right now. It'll make your teeth whiter, your batteries last longer, and your friends will like you even more. Okay, I made that last part up. But you might feel a sense of ownership when you watch Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Thanks again for being a Prodigy Head. I'm not going to lie to you. From where I sit, that may have been the most fun episode of Prodigy we've ever done. I know the players who didn't win may take exception with that evaluation. But speaking strictly in terms of being something fun and exciting to watch, these kids put on a spectacular show today, and my hat's off to them. 
The two-minute drill was just about as much fun as I've had watching a bowling event in a very long time. And as you would expect, the quality of the bowling just got better and better with each match today. We saw some up-and-coming talent and we saw some devastating strike balls from some young players who are destined to make waves with their bowling balls. They're all winners in my book, but two winners stand above the rest today. Drake Meenick in the Littles division and John Wolfolk in the Bigs. And now it's time to visit with John in the Prodigy Bowlers Tour Winner's Circle. He's the champion in the Bigs division of Super Roll 4. Look, it's John Wolfolk. And he won. Hi guys. Uh, so this is twice in what, two weeks or three weeks that you've come all the way up from Columbus. Yes, sir. You should have a little easier drive home this time. I don't think we have big storms brewing. Yes, sir. That last one was pretty bad. Uh, but I'd say you made it worth your while this time. Yes, sir. Uh, my blood is still pumping. Your body's still pumping? My blood is. Oh, nice shot. I got kind of nervous. But it feels pretty good being in the winter circle. Wow. You bowled great today. Yes, sir. So what did you think of that two-minute drill? I like it. It's something that... It's something that we should do a lot. Because, I mean... It, you know, makes people basically think that they're gonna... Makes their heart pound, I know that. Well, yeah, it makes the heart pound and like, you know, they just get all the pressure on there, just all like, oh, I got a strike, and all that, and then, uh, so basically, yeah, that's what it's all about. Well, you were the strikingest guy we had today, and for that, you get to sign the coveted trophy pin. His hand's right there. Put your name on there, and today's date, 125 2020. Anywhere you want.